And we are back. Yes, well, uh, we've been talking about the AFL, the uh, round nine games, but uh, coming up, by the sounds of things, in 2028, there's going to be a 19th licence, a 19th team, and we did talk to Dave Moore, who is a Tasmanian State League commentator. We had a good chat with him about the chances of the Tasmanian licence and obviously revolving on uh, the, the funding from the federal government. They're looking for $240 million, uh, to come and contribute towards the stadium down there at Macquarie Point. And uh, the great news is that the federal government have uh, confirmed that they will contribute to that funding, which is the, the last thing the AFL needed to, uh, to go to the presidents and get the approval for the 19th licence. And uh, it's come off. So, Dave, you'd be uh, pretty pumped down there and uh, you weren't far off the money and it must be a great feeling down there in Tassie. Yeah, fantastic, Faz. Yeah, it's been a big couple of weeks. Uh, probably a week out from the announcement we knew it was, was coming. There were lots of rumours about, about the funding coming forward. So, yeah, but still, the day that it happened, the day that uh, Gil uttered the words, the 19th licence goes to Tasmania. Uh, a lot of us that have been around in this battle for 30 years uh, couldn't believe what we're hearing. And there was a few tears and, yeah, it was a pretty emotional day. Yeah, well, um, I, I can remember when, when I was playing footy down there, everyone down there was always talking about, oh, do we ever get a team? We'll ever give a team. And the overall feeling was, oh, I don't think we've got big enough population. I don't think there's enough corporate money. And everyone sort of just saw, saw it as a, 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 never going to be an opportunity that the AFL would listen and, and get behind Tassie. But um, Great, great for Gil to uh, get behind it and make it happen. And um, he, di he didn't give up and he, he listened uh, to Tasmania. And Peter Gutwin, the, uh, the ex-premier from Tassie, he, he was big in, in driving this. And, uh, and also the, the current uh, lo local uh, Liberal government, uh, they, they didn't give up and, and they got the, um, the support and, um, you know, Everyone jumped on board and um, it, it finally happened. So I'm happy um, and I know a lot of other Tasmanians I've spoken to are really happy that uh, the AFL have given that 19th licence. Yeah, Faz, look, at the, Peter Gutwin, I think, out of the people you mentioned, it was, was really the catalyst to moving it a long way. Um, you know, I think he put his foot down with the AFL and he made threats such as, you know, we're not going to host games anymore, we're not going to pay for Hawthorne or North Melbourne. So I think he really shook the the environment up where it was sort of kicking the can down the road to make it uh, closer to reality. You get the task force on board. Of course, uh, there's a Colin Carter report after that, both of which were fairly positive and probably allayed a lot of the fears. You mentioned some of those reasons why people gave historically that the team couldn't happen. And I think those reports uh, really delved deeper into the situation and showed that, yes, it could be viable, of course, with government support. But, uh, of course, there's government support at the moment for Hawthorne and North Melbourne, so it, it's, it's sort of uh, relocating some of those funds. You know, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a really well-received announcement, but there has been some opposition to the stadium. So mm -hmm. I think most people are now on board with the... or well, nearly all the people are on, on board now with the team. The stadium has been a little bit divisive, and, Faz, you probably know from when the uh, Optus Stadium was built over in Perth, um, you know, it's a big expenditure, and there, there are... A, some people who think that the money could be spelled on, uh, spent on uh, other issues, social issues, uh, health and uh, housing, for example. So the stadium is not universally liked, I have to admit that, but the mm. team, uh, the, the announcement of the team was. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's an interesting situation. Yeah, well, there was some reports that the stadium wasn't going to have a roof because they didn't feel that maybe test cricket would be able to be played there because they can't play test cricket with a roof. Uh, and then, then the announcement was made and Gill was pretty adamant um, that there will be a stadium with a roof. Um, I mean, obviously it makes sense with the weather down there. Um, there's a lot more rain during the winter and it's pretty cold down there in Hobart uh, during that time. So you would think that the, um, to, to attract uh, spectators from the mainland and for, just for a comfort point of view that having a roof would, would uh, be better and obviously you play better quality footy down there so um, I'm sure the cost would be, would be more but uh, overall you'd have a great greatest stadium by having the roof wouldn't you think? Absolutely and that uh, cricket situation has been a little bit fact checked since it first came out because uh, a couple of people checked with the ICC and there are actually no rules 
about uh, test cricket and having a roof just mm. because it's, there's no stadiums that that uh, actually have a roof at the moment. And the roof proposed, and I'm not sure whether this has changed or not, is uh, not your retractable roof, but a permanent perspex roof, which will allow light to come through. That'll be enough for the grass to photosynthesise. Um, and that's the roof that's proposed at the moment. There is a stadium in Dunedin in New Zealand called the Glass House, yes, which is a, a similar one. So that's the the one at the moment. But certainly um, there was a little bit of talk about the roof, but that was sort of um, confirmed, I suppose, last week by Gil McLaughlin and Jeremy Rockcliffe that uh, a roof is still part of those plans for sure. Yeah. Well, Esther, you're uh, you're a Tassie girl uh, before coming over to well WA via. Northern Territory, did you say you've been oh, up there? Yes. You, you've done a bit of travels. But uh, you, you're a Tassie girl originally, and um, what's your thoughts on a Tassie licence? Obviously, you're a Richmond supporter like me, but have you got some interest in them when they come in? Oh, I'm super excited. Like, I'm beyond happy, like jumping for joy happy. Yeah. I'm, I think it's wonderful. I can see it being um, very, very good for... Uh, junior yeah. people, um, even you know the girls as well. Maybe there's a bit of an interest in uh, having yeah. a, a Tassie female team as well. Imagine that getting both started at the same time. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> um, no, really, really excited. And I'm interested to know that. I mean, there's obviously been a lot of talk down um, Hobart way about the stadium, and there is a lot of controversy about a lot of Tasmanians struggling at the moment. But there's also been some talk about spending some money on the stadium in Launceston yeah. too. Yeah. Um, do you have any information, Dave, on where? Where that sits at the moment? Yeah, so there's $65 million dollars announced by the government uh, about a week before the AFL announcement uh, for upgrades to, to Utah Stadium. And to be honest, they're, they're much needed. Um, it is starting to get a little bit tired and it sort of uh, lacks a lot of the facilities you'd expect in a modern stadium. So, I mean, that's that's the big debate now. Mm-hmm. There's the north and south, as you know, Faz. It's, uh, um, and guys, you know, it's, uh, it's always there. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the split of games, you know, how many are going to be in Hobart with a brand new stadium? How many will be in Launceston? There's still interest from Hawthorne to play games in Launceston, even after the Tassie team kicks off, maybe one or two a year. Mm. Maybe their, their away game against the Devils will be... Um, sorry, their, their home game against the Devils will be in, in Tasmania. So there's probably a chance for more content beyond uh, the Tassie team in Launceston. Also, uh, has to be taken into account that uh, this stadium build could take... You know, 2030 could be uh, mm. a date when it gets finally finished. So there could be two to three seasons where uh, the Tassie team will have to play out of Utah's Stadium and Bell Reef. So mm. there's a chance that content will still need to be there. So I think that uh, stadium funding was welcomed. It's a fair bit of money as well, of course. Um, but, yeah, the, the Utah Stadium does need a, an up, a significant upgrade um, just you know, to hold events, not just AFL, but to hold major events which yeah. can come along. yeah. Now, there's been a couple of uh, progress meetings, I believe, in the, in the last week. Um, I, I heard you on, a, uh, on, on an interview, you were interviewing the president of the Launceston Footy Club and, and they were having some meetings with regard to what it means for the state clubs. Um, can you tell us much about that? Yes, IFL Tasmania, pretty much straight away after the announcement, um, met with or rang up the, uh, the TSL clubs and said that the TSL won't, the Tasmanian State League that is, won't continue beyond 2024. Then 2025, uh, there'll be three regional leagues which will underpin the VFL team, which starts in 2025 mm. as, as a precursor to the AFL team. So that probably uh, met with mixed reactions, especially the Launceston teams who mm. have set themselves up um, you know, to, to uh, bring players through. A number of players have been drafted in the, in the last few years, mm-hmm. like Chase Jones, for example, yes. Toby Nankervis, yep. have all come from uh, North Launceston and Launceston. So uh, for them to look now at going to a regional competition, uh, you know, wasn't an easy thing for them to swallow. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. But the Southern clubs, there have been five of them, will probably be joined by a sixth club. And not a lot will change there, I don't think. Um, mm-hmm from their point of view, except they won't have to travel north. So, you know, uh, there's a few debates going on at the moment and uh, certainly the future of the TSL uh, is a debate, but it looks like the decision's made and uh, I like the fact that it's got an 18-month lead-up time. I mm. think it gives uh, time for the regional leagues to really be sorted, who's going to be in what division and that sort of thing. So I think that's a sensible move uh, to give it that 18-month you know, uh, leeway to make sure we get it right. Yeah, well... Um 
part of the funding that the AFL are obviously going to contribute is very much in the grassroots footy uh, development of the younger players. So has there been anything explained as to, you know, the, the, the juniors, the, the schools, any programs? Do you think it'll be enough money to get participation rates back up um, if, for, for footy in Tasmania? I think so, Faz. Uh, the, you know, talk of 90 million bucks there, and mm. I think it's not just going to be a you know, cash handout to clubs. I'm pretty sure uh, Damien Gill from AFL Tasmania was adamant that uh, you know, it'll be given for certain projects, whether it be infrastructure, whether it be um, junior development offices, those sorts of things. Um, so you know, targeted funding that will uh, make places a, a more pleasurable place to play, mm. but also to make sure you've got that junior development. And, you know, I, I think just the excitement of the AFL team, uh, getting youngsters excited. You know, I've seen that with the Jack Jumpers. Yeah. Uh, they're all wearing the, the green tops there. And I think the same sort of thing will happen foot with footy. Perhaps not uh, for a year or two. Mm. We'll see that flow through. But once things get going, uh, there'll be a lot of excitement out there. And it can only be good for junior footy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And as the, uh, it looks like there's been a little bit of argy-bargy. Uh, about the chances of being able to use the Tasmanian Devils um, and having them as the, the mascot. And uh, it sounds like there's a bit of leeway back now that the Tassie team will be given the opportunity uh, from what I'm hearing. What are you hearing there, Dave? Yeah, I think there was a bit of clickbait early on with the Warner Bros. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. It was, it was put out there. Uh, look, I think if you poll Tasmanians, and I think ultimately uh, there, there will be some mechanism to get people involved with the name. Um, I think most people can't imagine anything else other than the Tasmania Devils. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's unique. It's our, you know, uh, it's a fierce creature. It's something recognisably Tasmanian. Um, there's been a few other things thrown around, but um, I'd be very surprised if it wasn't anything other than the Tassie Devils. And I'm sure it'll be, uh, you know, the colours of uh, green, um, red, and yellow will be in that Guernsey there somewhere. Yeah, well, uh, very... There hasn't, hasn't been a green Guernsey fast since the old Frio day, so... No, that's right, yeah, yeah. Green. Yeah, well, I, me- I remember the uh, the State of Origin games uh, down there in North Hobart where they got up and beat Victoria, and um, that, that was an amazing game and a great crowd, and, um, gee, we've been talking about it for, what, 20, 30 years since, so that's, that's how big it was down there, and, um, you know, when you've got players like Alistair Lynch and... Um, Matthew Armstrong and Barwick and Manson and all those guys that played. It was a, it was a great side uh, for State of Origin. Pity we don't play State of Origin footy anymore, but uh, never know, might come back sometime. But, um, yeah, it'd be great for Tasmania, and I think it would be great for young kids uh, to be able to go and watch their team every Saturday or Sunday or every every second as a home game um, because that's, that's something they'll belong to and... and we're going to talk to Jeremy Webberley a little later in the show, who's the current coach, as you know, of the uh, Tasmanian Devils. Um, and just, yeah, just the fact that young kids, you know, that they'll want to play footy, they'll want to become one of those players that put on that jumper, and, and hopefully there's, there's more opportunity. With, obviously, um, some local academies they would need to, to retain players, you would think? Absolutely. Um... That there's talk of academy funding as well. Um, outside that 90 million I mentioned before, I think there's uh, another sum of money to set up that academy. Mm. And uh, a question for you guys, Faz. Um, you know, with all the talk of the 19th team now settled, there's uh, people are starting to. I see polls online about the 20th team. What, yeah. what would you think about uh, a third WA team? Is that is that a possibility? Uh, well, there is. T- there have been some rumblings, and there's been um, a few options thrown. That the population over here. Could um, could cover a, a third team. There's been talk of Mandra, which is a, around about an hour south of Perth, and then there's also the uh, the talk of like a Geraldton, a bit more of a regional area, which is north, uh, a few hours north of uh, Perth. So um, I'm not entirely sure. I, I kind of think two sides here in WA is enough. Uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's not for me to talk about it. People in WA footy up the top will probably know more about that. And um, I, I, I think 19 teams um, with Tassie involved and then possibly in, introducing a, a Northern Territory for me would be more, more the, the right way to go. What do you think, Esther? Yeah, as I said last week, I think uh, having a Darwin team or de- definitely something based in the Northern Territory would probably be better. Yeah. I just don't 
see it in WA for a 13. No. I, I just don't see it. Well, you'd have a bit of a backlash, I'd think, from South Australia, or a very mm. strong footy area as well. Um, and Canberra. Canberra, that's yeah. Yes, that's true. Canberra could be an option as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the 19th, 19th licence. And, yeah, being a Tiger supporter, obviously that's, that's my loyalty, but certainly would be very, very interested to see how Tassie goes and... Um, I certainly would be putting my interest ahead of the Dockers and the Eagles by, by the Tassie team coming in. Well, I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, family support teams, yeah. especially in, in, in Tassie, like you, the whole family gets behind it. And, you know, when a new child's born into a family, it's, you know, if the husband and wife go for different teams, it's who's going to get the, the jersey first on the kids, you know, which yeah. teams are going to be. So yeah. I think um, it'd be interesting to see what, existing families decide to do. Yeah. I don't see them letting go of their um, their current team. Yeah, some will, some won't. Mm. Yeah, a bit yeah. like over here in the Eagles, some some people dropped yes. off and enjoyed, but others have stayed loyal, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, especially um, with teams like Hawthorne, massive Hawthorne up in the north, a lot of support for Hawthorne up that way. Um, and the town I'm from, highly Colton orientated, don't know why. Mm. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Well, um, Dave, I was talk talking to a few mates from school. You know, it's, it's a topic that we, uh, you know, been talking about, been ringing up each other about it. And I was talking to Simon Peterson, who you know pretty well down yes. for many years down at uh, St Pat's Footy Club. He played a few premierships down there. He's uh, He was on the phone talking to me about it. And I spoke to Ben Hart. He's a, a Brisbane lion. And I was asking him, what's his family going to do? And, and they, they were sitting around the the table, you know, on a Saturday night, talking about it as a family. So what are we going to do? Are we going to stay with the Lions or are we going to go with the... And it's, it's amazing that it, what it's yeah. created. And look, to be honest, uh, some people won't change teams, but this is very much about the, the generation coming through. Um, you know, it's about the young people and, you know, I can see the youngsters coming through will now support the Tassie Devils. They yeah. won't be supporting mm. 13 other different teams. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do know some people that are looking at taking out two memberships. Yes. You know, one for their existing uh, AFL team and, and the Tassie team. So mm. there'll be a variety of approaches, but I'm sure it'll be well supported. And I think as well, once you start to see your mates from school, make, you know, making it through and, and getting on to a, a Tassie, putting on a Tassie jersey, yeah. that's going to have a, you know, huge huge influence, I think, on people swapping over. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see how um, the drafting and the recruiting works, um, because obviously there was the Gold Coast and GWS, and they got plenty of early draft picks, and it didn't really work for the Gold Coast, and they've been in the league, what, over 10 years now, um, and it's, it's taken a long time for them to even reach the finals, so you wouldn't want it to be structured like that, but they'd obviously have to attract a couple of big names that either ex-Tasmanian to come back, like maybe a Chance Jones or a Toby Nankervis, maybe in a few years at the end of coming towards the twilight of his career, but it's got the leadership and being involved in a big club. Um, and, and then obviously they'd have to attract um, some, some other players. They couldn't just have kids running out. They'd get, you know, take them a couple of years to... To, to be competitive like like it sort of happened with GWS, Dave? That's right. I'm, I'm confident that uh, Gill and now uh, Andrew Dillon, of course, and, and the team there have learnt the mistakes of GWS Gold Coast. And people say GWS has been a bit of a fail, but when you actually look back on it, uh, they did make a lot of final series and you know made a grand final. So you know, I don't think they've been successful off the field gathering a lot of support in Western Sydney necessarily, but on field they were quite successful. But... Uh, as I was saying, I, I think they've learnt the lesson of uh, setting up for those clubs and I think they're determined to make the Tasmanian team a mid-table team from the start. Mm. Uh, not to have them languishing down the bottom for two or three years. Um, so whatever mechanisms they've got at their disposal, whether it be free agency, whether it be drafts, etc., um, I think they'll pull some levers to make sure that that first team that runs out in 2028 will be a good one. And, and, and is there much local talent in there at the moment, in sort of players that are in their sort of early 20s that are playing in the State League that you could see could step up and play that, that level? Uh, I think more around the 17, 18, 19 uh, year of age. Like, it's been a bit uh, soul-destroying because we've had a few players that uh, 
because our state league's not quite at the level it should be, mm. that have tried to make the next step by going to South Australia or the VFL or up to Queensland. You know, I think of players like Ryan Mansell that plays with the Tigers, yep. Jai Menzi uh, that plays now with, with the Bombers, uh, even uh, Majacek. Yeah. Um, these players have, have played at another uh, state level uh, after they've been to Ta- Of course, they were developed in Tassie. But uh, hopefully with the VFL team, that will mean that uh, they've got that they don't have to leave the state to make that next step. So I think that will really develop some good players mm. prior to coming in. I mean, that's, as I said, the VFL team comes in three years prior to the AFL team. Yeah. Uh, so I think there'll be some really good development going on there. Just, just out of interest, um, Dave, do you think that um, this may have, you know, having the 19th licence in, in the male competition might encourage, uh, you know, um, a female team? The, I think there, there the is league. definitely um, part of the contract with the AFL is for an AFLW team. And, you know, I'm hearing some whispers that it may even come in before uh, the AFL team. So it um, mm. could be 26 or 27. So that could be really exciting for, for sure because yeah. there's a lot of female talent down here um, that uh, can really make a, the basis of a, a competitive AFLW team. Well, I think it would be great because I remember playing netball there at, at Hobbler's Bridge. And <laughs> yes. I have to say, that was pretty rough. So I can't imagine what a Tasmanian AFL team would be. Like, that would be pretty nasty. <laughs> I reckon the other ladies would be shaking in their boots. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Dave, uh, I'll leave with, with one question, and thanks again for your, for your time. I know, you know you're busy with your commitments of teaching and also um, your TSL commentary commitments and everything you cover down there. But um, one, one last question for you from me. Uh, who would be your marquee player if they could attract one to, to maybe be the first skipper? of the Tasmanian team. Who, who would you like to see? Yeah, well, look, uh, we, we've mentioned him already, and uh, he's just starting to really blossom as a footballer. He'll be 21 now, 22. He'll be 27, 28 by the time the team starts. Well, I really like Chase Jones. I think uh, he, he, he's a, a really good player. He's uh, got a, a lot of style about him. He gets a lot of possessions, really good uh, disposal. So the way he's tracking... I think he could be one that we could look at. He wouldn't be our marquee player necessarily. No. He wouldn't be your, your Gary Ablett, etc. But I yeah. think he'd make an excellent captain. Right. Having, I've, I've tracked his uh, progress from uh, Kings Meadows High School right yeah. through. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, he's a good quality fella. So he'd be one I'd look at for a captain anyway. Yeah, I've been watching a little bit of him with, uh, with the Adelaide Crows. He's playing really good footy, getting a lot more of the footy now than uh, the last yep. couple of years. And he's just sort of got that confidence and... Maybe uh, under under the new coach the last couple of years, he's really given him that confidence to run and, and take the game on a bit more. And he's, he's hitting the scoreboard as well, isn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Dave, um, thanks very much. Um, SD, that was a gr- great great chat there. Um, anything you'd like to, to say to Dave? Oh, you just made me more excited. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to come back on later in the season, Faz, and uh, give you a bit of an update how it's all going. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Thanks very much, Dave. 